Hindi Quint and Bloomberg Quint from this very energetic, very picturesque uh, rally town of Solon where we've got Mr. Rahul Gandhi who's really had a charged engagement uh, with this large crowd just about, uh, ended just about 10 minutes back. You know, today's the last day. This was your last rally. It's been 90 days of being on the road. Uh, when you look back, uh, what's the sense you get from the kind of things uh, that you may have, you know, recalibrated, re-emphasized, done differently? I think it's been a it's been a learning campaign for me like like most campaigns um, overall i think the congress party has done a pretty good job uh, taking into account the constraints we have we have massive financial constraints when compared to the bjp as everybody knows so it's been a it's been a good experience I've learned quite a lot but always you can fine tune things and you know there's always there's always a better way of doing everything so right as I said, in, in, in adversity, in constrained environment, I guess your learnings are that much uh, so the brighter side of <laughs> things. You know, I'm going to, uh, this is the end of the campaign, but the next week is uh, government formation. Now, yesterday we heard from the Congress party, Mr. Gulam Nabi Azad said openly that you're not going to be standing up uh, or standing in the way of a... No, that's, that's, uh, I've, I've made it very clear that we have to respect the opinion of the masters okay uh, the masters are these people they are going to decide what is going to happen so anything that is said prior to that decision on 23rd is premature mm -hmm. i'm not making any comments on government formation on any of that stuff i'm very clear they are going to give their decision the moment they give the decision there will be complete clarity before that i'm not going to insult their their position uh, insult their status by saying, you know, I will do this or I will do that. And that goes for the entire Congress party. Understood. But in terms of the flexibility of the Congress uh, in, uh, in, in trying to install uh, a, a government which is not an NDA government, how flexible would the Congress be? I'm not going to comment on that until I have clearly in front of me the decision of the people of India. It's, mm -hmm. It would be insulting for me to start prejudging them and, and start commenting on what they're going to do. So I'll give you the answer to that question. On the 23rd, it's what? It's only a couple only of days. Five days. Or you can come, days you can ask me, you can come to an interview and you can say, okay, what do you say now? And I will say, yes, sir, this is how we're going to proceed. Okay, we'll take you up on, <laughs> on that one. Sanjay, uh, no, mandate ka respect karna ek baat hai. Uh, lekin real politik ya cheez hai. Single largest party hone ke naate, agar aapke rival chale gai chithi le karke ki humko bulaiye, usko aapko preempt karna hi chahiye. Uske liye aap kya kar rahe? Okay. सिंगल लार्जेस्ट पार्टी होगी नहीं अगर आप अगर आप अगर आप हाइपो हाइपोथेटिकल बात कर रहे हो तो मैं हाइपोथेटिकल बात करता हूँ सिंगल लार्जेस्ट पार्टी तो सवाल ही नहीं उठता मगर मेरा मेन पॉइंट है कि जो जनता कहेगी उसकी बेसिस पे उस फ्रेमवर्क पर सरकार बनेगी उन्होंने अभी कहा नहीं उन्होंने बोला नहीं जैसे ही वो बोलेंगे वो पूरा साफ हो जाएगा but I think the I think the point that Sanjay is making is that you may have a limited window. For, no, for instance, in Karnataka, no, we, we saw a very quick we decision. We don't have a limited window. We don't have a limited window. The window will be defined by what the people say. We have a we we cannot make those decisions right now because we don't know what the people say. जनता जो बोलेगी उसके बाद भी फिर हाइपोथेसिस के बेसिस पे कांग्रेस लीनियज का प्राइम मिनिस्टर साउथ इंडिया का प्राइम मिनिस्टर दलित महिला प्राइम मिनिस्टर कोई सवाल मुझे अलग अलग तरीके से पूछ रहे हैं <laughs> मैंने उसको जवाब दे दिया मैं फिर से उसको थोड़ा घुमा के बता देता हूँ थोड़े दूसरे तरीके से आपको मतलब प्लीज करने के लिए बता देता हूँ देखिए जनता डिसीजन करेगी तेईस तारीख को और जनता मालिक है जैसे ही जनता डिसीजन करेगी हम आपके सवाल का जवाब दे देंगे उससे पहले जवाब देना उनका डिसरिस्पेक्ट I come to Nyai, uh, you know, and clearly you, you spent a large amount of time on Nyai, and this clearly is the big idea that uh, has been put forward in, in, in the manifesto. Personally, uh, I believe that, in, you know, if welfare economics is very important for a functioning democracy, so I'm a great supporter of Nyai. But uh, the flip side of Nyai is that you need to have a massive amount of economic growth because an, all welfare economics is successful when the economy is successful, otherwise it's a drain on the economy. Now this country needs massive deregulation. You talked about it for, you know, you talked about a couple of things. But are you prepared for a new deal for our economy, not incrementalism? I'm not only prepared, uh, there is no option. We, we ran a economic financial model in the 90s 
That model worked in the 90s. We tweaked that model. We didn't develop a new model. We tweaked that model in 2004. Uh, and it worked reasonably well with the tweaks till about 2012. And then it just collapsed. We understand and accept that the 1990s model is not going to work in 2019. Mr. Narendra Modi didn't understand that. Mr. Narendra Modi took Mr. Manmohan Singh Ji's, the Congress Party's ideas, abused them, and then used them. And he used them at a time when they just were not firing anymore. We got into trouble in 2014 because of those ideas. So absolutely, there has to be a new paradigm. Uh, there has to be a new approach. Of course, not divorced from the past. So you're not going to suddenly see a, uh, you know, a, a complete divergence from the past. But you do need a new paradigm. We are faced with a tremendous challenge. Probably as big as any challenge that we have ever faced. Uh, challenge is massive population, massive young population, and inability to create jobs for them. Nyay Yojana has two aims. First aim is to send the message to poor people that in the 21st century, India is not going to accept poverty. It's going to wipe it out. Okay. And second, it is to jumpstart the economy and bring the economy to the point which you mentioned of, of solid growth. Because what Mr. Narendra Modi has done, he has sucked the money out of the economy. The economy is basically transactions. Number of transactions determine uh, an economy, right? And India's strength is that we have so many people, we can have so many transactions. Mr. Narendra Modi destroyed transactions. He just shut them down. Note Bandi, demonetization, Gabbar Singh tax, he killed it. People talk to me, people say, you know, nationalism. The most anti-national thing you can do is destroy the Indian economy. Narendra Modi has done it. So Nyay Yojana is going to, the best way to put it is Nyay Yojana is going to remonetize what Mr. Narendra Modi demonetized. But that, and I agree with you, as I said, I'm a great supporter of welfare economics. That is only going to bring us back to the sort of uh, 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 constrained economic growth that we've now seen for five or seven years. Clearly, this economy needs deregulation on a, on a massive I'm, scale. I am for, de I'm, I'm for decentralization. I am I'm absolutely for decentralization. Uh, I all the, the kind of policies that we have, Mr. Gandhi. Ninety percent of India's GDP, and, and this is we, we don't talk about it enough. Ninety percent of India's GDP is produced in the private sector. We are one of the most private sector intensive economy. All our farmers are private. All our small businessmen are private. All our small shopkeepers. All our retail. Everything. But you know the kind of regulated environment that we have created is so. And you spoke about it. You spoke about the fact that for three years you will not ask any questions. So my question is, whenever a new government comes in. It happened to your father also. They come in with a lot of ideas, but no, the bureaucracy just captures you. Are you going to be able to break that stangle? Uh, there's two things. I've been in politics now 15 years. Ideas are all good. But in order to implement an idea, you need an ongoing conversation. When, when they were talking about GST, we told them that, look, don't view GST as an event. We said, forget Congress, forget BJP. If you view this thing as an event, it's going to be a disaster. This is a process. This is a conversation. This is listening to people who are shouting and saying, you know, we've got into trouble. So, an idea has to be shaped and evolved through a conversation. What I'm saying is that the Congress party is bringing a lot of ideas to the table. But the implementation of those ideas is going to happen through a conversation. And all stakeholders should be part of that conversation. And fresh lateral new talent. Because absolutely, we, we've seen that enough in this country that you, you come in with a wanting transformation and then you get trapped in incrementalism because that's, the, that's what the system is. I, I, think that, I think the way to look at it is bring the ship back to where it was uh, a few years ago in terms of the basics, the fundamentals, uh, institutional structure, you know, the, the atmosphere, the removal of the hatred and the anger Mr. Narendra Modi has spread, number one. Number two, start working on some of the stuff that you're talking about. Deregulate, pull out, you know, remove some of the red tape. And then think about two or three strategic bets, yes. global bets, not Indian bets, not Himachal bet but a global bet. You know, um, 
green revolution is a global bet. A computer revolution is a global bet. So think about how India interacts with the world. Think about the world's situation and then say, okay, these are the three bets that we're going to make and hopefully one, if we're lucky, two will work. But they should be, they should be transformational. They should not be small. I think that's they should be transformational. I can tell you, I can tell you also where I think some of those bets are, right? I think a really big powerful bet is in completely rethinking about what healthcare is in India and in understanding that India has the capability because of its unique nature, because of its population, to shape global healthcare. India can become the force that shapes the world's healthcare. One. Two, railways, the way we think about railways and the way we think about our air transport network. The way we think about transporting material inside India. I think there, there is stuff there that can be done that would completely reshape this country. But even, even a simple idea like uh, corporatization of the railways. Now that's been talked about for the last 15 years. But no one's, I'm not talking about privatization. I'm talking about corporatization. I, I mean, I, uh, those, are, those are tactics. Those are how you get to the place. I, I'm talking right now more at the strategy level. I'm talking, okay, how does India, how does India, what are the steps India needs to take to, for example, use Indian healthcare data? What, what oil is to Saudi Arabia, data is to India. And healthcare data, Indian healthcare data will shape global healthcare. I'm absolutely certain about it. Now, one second, how do we think about it? And how do we do it? You see, if, yeah, if the exactly. implementation and that, that's going to be a conversation. You see, I I don't pretend to imagine that the answers reside in my head. I don't. Or the, even in the existing structures. Yeah. Even in the existing no, institutions. In, in the existing stakeholders, the answers reside. Yes. Right. But and and all governments. Yeah, yeah. And the structures are part of the stakeholders. Yes. Yeah. Job or data or new thinking ki apne baat kahi. Sabse badi anxiety millennials ki is waqt hai ki mera future India mein kya hai. मुझे लगता है कि ये 22 लाख या 11 लाख जॉब ये बहुत ही रूटीन सॉल्यूशन है क्योंकि सामने इन सरमाउंटेबल चैलेंज है आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस का मशीन लर्निंग का पॉलिसी के लेवल पर इस पर आपके क्या थॉट हैं मशीन लर्निंग आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस हिंदुस्तान के स्ट्रक्चर को बहुत मदद करेंगे अगर उनका हम ठीक से यूटिलाइजेशन करेंगे मैं आपसे एक काउंटर सवाल पूछता हूं नरेंद्र मोदी ने 5 लाख 55000 करोड़ रुपए पंद्रह लोगों का कर्जा माफ किया पंद्रह उस पांच लाख पचपन हजार करोड़ रुपए में स्मॉल मीडियम बिजनेस वाले कितने हैं रोजगार तो स्मॉल मीडियम बिजनेस वाले देते हैं उनके लिए आपने डिमोनेटाइजेशन किया उनके लिए आपने गब्बर सिंह टैक्स किया इनके लिए आपने पांच लाख पंद्रह पचपन हजार करोड़ रुपए कर्जा माफ किया तो अगर आप स्मॉल मीडियम बिजनेस को स्ट्रेंथ नहीं देंगे अगर आप उनको प्रोटेक्शन नहीं देंगे अगर आप उनको बैंक की एक्सेस नहीं देंगे तो रोजगार कहां से आएगा बिग आइडिया गांधी देर वुड बी फॉर इंस्टेंस वन ऑफ द बिगेस्ट फेलिंग ऑफ द करंट गवर्नमेंट is that when they walked in they were facing a twin balance sheet problem the banks were in trouble companies were in trouble they did not recapitalize the banks when they could have in 2014 they did not rethink the banking institutions of india i mean are you prepared for those kind of big changes see see we are of the view that a new paradigm is needed narendra modi says एक बार फिर मोदी सरकार वट इज प्रपोजिंग टू इंडिया इज आई एम गोइंग टू रन द टू थाउजेंड फोर मॉडल अगेन दैट्स क्रेजी इट्स नॉट वर्क आई एम टेलिंग यू द इन्वेंटर ऑफ द मॉडल मनमोहन सिंह जी टोल्ड मी राहुल इन टू थाउजेंड ट्वेल्व दिस इज नॉट वर्किंग आई एम इट इज नॉट वर्किंग इट्स रन इट्स कोर्स इट्स डन इट्स डन इट्स जॉब राइट ए पर्टिकुलर सेट ऑफ आइडियाज have a time frame within which they operate right so it's done his job now narendra modi is proposing to re refire it up that's why he's getting the response he's getting that's why we're getting the response because they're like no no way it can't be done so it is going to be a conversation it is going to be a paradigm shift but it is not going to be whimsical it's not going to be it's not going to be we're going to build toilets it's not going to be 15 lakh rupees it's not going to be like that 
it is going to be a conversation with the people of India, with the businesses, or people who run the businesses, with the farmers. Say we all stakeholders. Okay, where do we go? What are the big changes? What are the big changes? And you know, and and, and, and by the way, uh, you are suggesting this. This is an excellent idea, and you are suggesting. Bhaiya, 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 chant, chant, ho jaye, you're suggesting this, this is an excellent idea and you're suggesting this, sorry, can't be done. So that conversation is what Mr. Narendra Modi has stopped and that's frankly what India is. India is not one man who comes in, you know, just uh, gives speeches and says, you know, uh, what Mr. Narendra Modi does. India is 1.4 billion voices, you gotta respect them. They'll tell you what to do. Can I switch to... Uh, 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 Achha, we've got, a, we've got a time we've got issue. Five minutes. So last question. La last, last question. The very last, last question. Last for each. Last for each. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, you go with last. Uh, Mera baas simple sawaal hai. As a old Congress beat reporter, Congress leadership ka sabse bada challenge ya crisis ye hai ki us leadership ka 80 percent time HR management, mismanagement, interpersonal relationship management mein buri tarah se jata hai. Aur wo leader ko way down karta hai big picture ko execute karne mein, plan karne mein. Is problem ko main bahut zyada address hote hue dekh nahi pata hu. नहीं भैया देखिए कांग्रेस कांग्रेस पार्टी कॉन्वर्सेशन है बातचीत है और उसमें डिस्टरबेंस आएगा ही आएगा कांग्रेस पार्टी का जो लीडर होता है उसकी स्किल ये है कि भैया बहुत सारी मतलब बहुत सारा डिस्कशन चल रहा है और जो मेन नफ्स है जो मेन बात है वो क्या है वो एक प्रकार से वो फिल्टर करके निकालता है और ये जो जो बातचीत है जिसको आप डिस्टर्बेंस कहते हो ये एक प्रकार से आवाज है देश की आवाज है अगर आप अगर देश की आवाज को सुनोगे तो वो ऑर्डर्ड नहीं ऑर्गेनाइज नहीं वो डिसऑर्डर्ड है जैसे मैं आपको दूसरे प्रकार से उदाहरण देता हूं शिफ्ट की बारात शिफ्ट की बारात में एक ऑर्डर होता है और ऑर्डर में एक डिसऑर्डर होता है तो एक आदमी कह सकता है ये तो टोटल डिसऑर्डर है मगर फिर अगर एक आदमी ध्यान से देखे तो कहेगा हाँ डिसऑर्डर इस लेवल पे है मगर इस लेवल पे बहुत बढ़िया ऑर्डर चल रहा है तो कांग्रेस की नेचर वो है वो लगती डिसऑर्डर है मगर फाउंडेशन उसका बड़ा ऑर्डर है बीजेपी में प्रॉब्लम क्या है वो फॉल्स ऑर्डर लगाते हैं वो हिंदुस्तान पे फेक ऑर्डर लगाने की कोशिश करते हैं और वो ऑर्डर ही खोखला है I I want to then therefore since it's the last question on foreign policy. Now we've seen a a paradigm shift in under the Modi government in terms of they've escalated foreign policy to a very muscular level. The, the, the counter strikes, the air strikes, and then owning them, and talking about them. Not really. That's not what's happened. So you give us a sense of would you what's what's happened is what's happened is uh, Narendra Modi was given a clear message by China in Doklam, and he went to China and bowed in front of them. That's what's happened. The Chinese were absolutely crystal clear. They sent a message to Mr. Narendra Modi in Doklam and Mr. Narendra Modi panicked, buckled, went there and had a conversation about uh, a conversation with no agenda. No agenda. When there's a massive issue on the border called Doklam, no agenda. That's, that's complete uh, submission. Right? So that's one. Number two, He's taken foreign policy away from the experts. So we did six surgical strikes, but Manmohan Singh didn't do them. Manmohan Singh, the army, the strategic architecture of India did it. What Mr. Modi has done, who cares what the strategic ar architecture of India says? Who cares what the Air Force? I mean, he's saying, he's telling the Air Force people, he's giving the Air Force people advice that, you know, we should not delay the strike because clouds will protect our planes from the radar? I mean, where are we sitting? Mr. Narendra Modi, radar is designed to see planes. Please go and read up a little bit about modern radar or walk to the front of your plane and have a chat with the pilots. They'll tell you what's going on. So he has taken strategy and made it into a circus. Strategic thinking, strategic actions are not circuses. Strategic actions are done after thinking and a whole bunch of strategic actions are not spoken about ever. So but we didn't we didn't speak about surgical strikes. But now that that's happened, I'm saying now foreign policy has moved to that notch where India has openly bombed uh, territory inside Pakistan. Therefore, that, that it has escalated to another threshold. My question to you is the Congress's foreign policy, as you said, has always been one of strategic restraint. But now that Look, it foreign, has moved, the, the foreign policy challenges 
uh, in the 21st century are pretty clear. Okay, uh, there is on one hand a superpower, the United States, and on the other hand, there is an emerging superpower called China. There is confusion in Europe. There is uh, fragmentation taking place in Europe, and India has to understand and accept that it has a global role. It has to stand with China, with America as an equal. It can't stand as subservient to either of these two uh, powers. It's a huge moment for the Indian nation. But India has to realize where its strengths lie and where it is not strong. India cannot do what Mr. Narendra Modi does, which is not rely on the strategic understanding and strength of India. That is true power. That is true understanding. Making these speeches and, you know, trivializing everything just to get a couple of votes, that's not foreign policy. Mr. Narendra Modi might call it foreign policy. That's not foreign policy. Foreign policy is going to the Indian establishment and saying, foreign policy is establishment and saying, you guys understand this. I have a little bit of a sense of it. Tell me what you think. Not telling, not telling pilots, right? Pilots, aces. They listen, uh, don't delay your strike because Mr. Narendra Modi is a genius who understands radar. Final, final, final question. Run, huh? final, 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 final question. You, you talked about how China. Yeah, like, yeah, like how <laughs> you talked about. You talked about how China and America are the two poles. Is it going to be equidistant from both, or will we have a greater alignment with the Americans? A political leader in India was once asked, does India lean left or lean right? And she said, India stands tall. That's the answer. Thank you.